you for joining us today. Uh, this is a session that's part of our Global Learning Showcase. This is um, a postgraduate opportunity at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey, joined by Nadine, who will be actually doing most of the presenting today. Um, and um, at the end, we'll have a lot of opportunities for questions. And so um, I'll just hand it over from there. Where we like and um, well, you're right on time. So, uh, my name is Nadine, and I work at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. Um, so, I'm just going to today talk to you a little bit about the master's degrees that we offer, what type of careers our students are getting, how to fund a degree, and a little bit about our admissions process. And so, I'll quickly go over um, this presentation and then We'll stop recording and we can kind of talk one on one more informally, have a little lunch and talk about your your futures and if grad school is the right fit for you. So um, again, this I just just what I just mentioned, this is what we'll be talking about today. Um, so the Middlebury Institute of International Studies is the graduate institute in Monterey. We're part of the larger Middlebury family. Um, the Middlebury College is based out in Vermont. That's the undergraduate school. Um, you might have heard of the Middlebury Study Abroad Schools. They offer different study abroad programs for college students all around the world. Our Middlebury School of the Environment, that's housed every summer um, at our campus, actually, at the Institute. But again, we're the, we're the Middlebury Institute of International Studies, and for short, I might be calling us Miss. so if you hear me say that what I'm talking about. So we were actually founded in 1955 as the Monterey Institute of International Studies, but um, about a decade ago, we joined the Middlebury family. Um, we currently offer 12 master's degrees, half of which focus and emphasize um, a second or third language in, in a global career. The other half emphasize policy, education, um, management, and a couple other different topics, all related, again, within that international scope. We are, we're a very small institute. We have about 695 students on campus right now. Um, our student-to-faculty ratio is 9 to 1, so the campus itself, it's, it's very intimate. The class sizes are very small. People really get to know each other on a first-name basis. 35% of our students are coming from abroad, most students have lived abroad and or speak more than two, sometimes three or more languages. We have about 53 countries represented right now and 45 native languages. Um, so like I was just saying, our master's degrees are broken into two schools, half of which emphasize language education, translation, interpretation, and the other half are looking at international policy and management. So now I'm going to introduce some of our master's degrees that focus on language-based careers. These, some examples of these are language teaching. So if you were considering becoming a high school French teacher or a college Spanish teacher, getting um, a degree in language teaching would be a great option for you. Our, some of our signature programs are as our translation interpretation programs. Um, these are programs where they sound just like what, what they are, translating and interpreting, interpreting from one language to another language. And then finally, the localization of products and services. Have any of you heard of localization and mm -hmm. know what localization is? No? I'm not sure what's that. I know that word, though. Yeah, so it's the, it's the cross between language, culture, and digital media. So it, it encompasses a lot of different things. Consider someone who works at Netflix and is doing subtitles or a person who's working at Google or Apple and they're taking content from one language and adapting it into another language. Well, if any of you speak a second and third language, you know that translating isn't just, you know, ABC to ABC. There's a lot of cultural considerations. Um, so that program is one of our newer programs. It's also one of the, it gets career outcomes that are highly lucrative um, for many of these degrees, but I'll, I'll go into a little bit of the specifics of that program. 
in a little bit here. So I'm going to talk about our translation interpretation and localization management. These are four degrees. Students can do translation and interpretation. They can do only translation. They can do conference interpretation and then localization management. We offer seven languages for the translation interpretation programs. Um, and then with our translation localization management, students can also add Portuguese. Typically, a student will pair a, the English with the second language. In some cases, students might have three languages. So they're pairing English with two other options that we have. Um, a couple of things to mention about these programs. Uh, we require students be at a 300 level in their target language if they want to do any of these language programs. And that's because these programs are, uh, these courses and the programs are content based, they're very high level. We are expecting students to be at a near native proficiency um, at the point of admission. In some cases, some students, you know, might be really passionate about translation interpretation. Maybe they don't have professional experience. Um, so we do have a couple options to help get students to that level uh, prior to the start of the program. If any of you are interested in that, we can talk a little bit more about those entry requirements one-on-one um, -on -one after this. Um, and so what types of careers these students are getting? Um, most common is the United Nations. We get a lot of students who know they wanna work at the Olympics. Um, our faculty have really close ties and connections with the UN. Um, and about every year we have an agreement where they seek, they come to us and ask for about five students to hire um, for translation interpretation services. Um, these students can also go into um, the private sector and work with big companies and offer translation interpretation services. Uh, many of our students will become um, like freelance interpreters and translators. And so those are our language, half of our language degrees. The other half are focused on language education. So teaching English to speakers of other, other languages and teaching a foreign language. So if you wanna be a teacher in any foreign language, this would be a great program for you. If you want to write curriculum that focuses on language education for K through 12, international schools, either in the United States or abroad, um, or if you want to teach English, uh, if you wanna go abroad after you graduate uh, college and teach English, getting a, a master's in TESOL or TFL uh, would be a great option for you. One thing that's really nice about these programs is that this program specifically is that they can be done completely remote. So a lot of our students will take advantage of our international community, international network, and do part of their program abroad or um, in, a, in a couple different locations, depending on their interests. Um, and these, the TESOL and TFL programs can also be taken as just a certificate. Um, in some cases, People just want to go abroad for two or three years after they graduate. So doing a whole master's degree isn't necessary. Um, and so that certificate option is, is a great second choice if you're interested in that kind of career. So I'm not going to show the videos um, just so we can really kind of get talking to each other one on one. Um, and so now I'm going to talk about our policy and culture related master's degrees. These get careers in international policy, any type of development work, um, nonprofit, humanitarian work, environmental policy, education policy, um, and then international trade. So the first program is our Masters of Public Administration in Social Change. This program is great for somebody who wants to run their own nonprofit or who wants to work at grassroots levels. Um, some of the courses in this program in include organizational development, organizational leadership, organizational management, all from this bottom up approach. Uh, this program is a three semester program. So it's really nice because you can start and finish the degree within 12 months. So it's really fast paced, um, but it's definitely designed to get students into the working force. So um, actually the next couple of programs I'm gonna talk about are all fast paced one year programs. So, um, that. Uh, the next option, our master's program, is our international policy and development. This program is similar to our MPA, except it takes a top-down approach. So this is really looking at um, development, organizational management, and leadership, but from the higher governmental policy approach. So 
Um, if you're somebody who wants to work in DC at the State Department at USAID, um, if you want to be an ambassador or work at an embassy, this is a program that would really help to prepare you for that type of career. And again, you can complete it really quickly in 12 months. And then um, we have our International Trade and Economic Diplomacy Program. This one is unique because students can kind of go into many different sectors. We see some students go the government route and either work with local governments or state governments um, on, on business side of things, assisting with trade policy, trade negotiation, trade laws. We see students go into um, doing that same work um, in the private sector, working for big companies um, or international companies. Um, and then we see even some students doing a lot of consulting with businesses and, and private companies who are doing any type of international trade. Um, one of the unique things, well, one cool thing I think about all of these three programs that I've just mentioned is that they can all be combined to do a joint degree. Um, so in some cases, we get a lot of students who are applying for fellowships like the Pickering or Payne or Wrangell, um, which do require two year master's degrees. Um, so if you are one of the students who's on that kind of foreign service, foreign di or diplomacy path, um, combining these to do a joint degree is a really great option. And you can pair them in any way you want with um, international trade and policy and development, the MPA with policy and development, the MPA with trade. Um, so there's a lot of unique ways to kind of get, get um, experiences and get degrees in both of those topics. And they all actually have the same core. So many of those students will start off just doing one degree and then they'll fulfill the requirements for the other degree. And so they're like, oh, well, I might as well just do one more year of grad school because it's so much fun. <laughs> and um, they, had, they end up adding a second degree. Uh, so this next one is our Master's of International Education Management. This is um, actually what my master's degree is in my background. I worked in study abroad. Um, international students and services at universities, um, teaching English and uh, um, abroad, working at any type of international school, either in the administrative side of things or on the actual education side. So there's really a lot of careers um, students code can go into this into with this field and with this degree. Um, another common route that our students and alumni have done is the government route. So working at US, USAID, working um, at the Department of Education, working um, you know, at that really high policy level to write education policy and do administrative education work. This program is also great because you can do it completely online. Um, the program itself is fully online. Um, and one thing I just really love to say about this program is I, I didn't do my master's with um, Miss. But the institution I did my master's with, um, all of our required readings were from the program chair and the faculty at MISS. So it was funny when you walked in and there, there was a guy earlier, he said a really famous faculty we have and her textbook was like my Bible going through, through school. And then when I got hired and they were like, oh, Catherine's works here. And I'm like, wait, me, Catherine, like me, David, like my textbooks, you know, and so it's always, I just really like to share that because it's a really exceptional program. Um, and the next is our International Environmental Policy Program. This is a traditional two-year master's program. Um, and what's kind of unique about this option is that students start off their first semester or second semester taking general courses. And then in their second year, they choose um, a select path. So we offer coastal management and resources um, sustainable, sustainable business, and then um, natural resource management. And <laughs> sorry, um, this program is really great for someone who wants to tackle the world's environmental issues from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, they are our faculty in this program are exceptional. They actually have their own research center on campus, campus called the Center for the Blue Economy. Um, so a lot of students will do research and actually get jobs there um, when they graduate. And then our last, last program is our nonproliferation and terrorism studies. And this is one of our um, signature programs that we have at the Institute. This is another two-year program 
Um, this is one of the few programs that requires a few culture policy programs that requires a second language as part of the degree. Um, and you, this program is really designed for somebody who wants to work um, as in security, whether it's national or global, um, someone who might want to work with um, nonproliferation and terrorism, um, cybercrime, cybersecurity, um, the prevention of WMDs, um, all of that, that nonproliferation and terrorism type topics. Um, this program is really unique in that we have um, three research centers, all one based at Monterey, the other in DC, and the other in Vienna. So our students are really getting great experiences all over the world, um, you know, researching these topics and really getting practical experiences in their field. One noteworthy thing I can mention too about our students um, in, in plus, in, from last spring was they were focusing on surveillance and they work really closely with the US government and our army. And so they were one of some of the first to watch Russia mobilizing their military and going up against Ukraine. And they, they came out with this great report that was all over the news. And it was our students who, who were witnessing, some of the first to witness that happen. Um, so we have a couple other degrees. Um, I mentioned a lot of um, those uh, policy degrees can be combined to do joint degrees. Students can also com combine some of our language degrees. And we have some of our programs that are fully online. With COVID, most of our programs can be completed online, um, at least up until 2024, they've said. But we're seeing a slow shift of programs moving completely online because students are liking it so much. But right now it's great, um, our, especially for our domestic students, they have the option to do some weeks in person, some weeks online. Um, my fiance is actually a student at the Institute and he got this amazing opportunity to travel for two weeks and they just let him go to Columbia while he was doing his work. He's in the environmental policy program. So he was doing work, um, but, they're very flexible. They really encourage students to get a lot of practical experience. So, um, which is a great segue into why should you consider the Middlebury Institute for your grad school? So the biggest thing is that we are really emphasizing real world and practical experience, um, taking theory beyond the classroom and applying what you know in the field. Um, so one thing that is unique about our institution is that we don't require students to write a big thesis or do a capstone project. Our students do practicums, which can be paid internships. They could be um, like this international professional service semester. Um, students can apply, apply for up to $3,000 of study abroad and experiential learning funding and do a field research abroad or a, a a project um, that they partner with faculty on to, to design. So it's really intentional. Um, students work with a couple different people on campus to design what this is going to be in their last semester. Um, and what really smart students will do is leverage their practicum into their actual career. So if you know you want to work at USAID, our faculty and our advisors will work with you to get your practicum there. So you kind of already have your foot in the door um, and, you know, many of our students will graduate already with their career, and it's because of this practicum. Um, and then I mentioned we have a lot of different research centers on campus for students to take advantage of. Um, so our students in the environmental policy program can work for um, the Center for the Blue Economy. Our students in um, the nonproliferation and terrorism studies program can go to CNS or CTEC, which is the Center for Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism. So there's a lot going on on campus. And one thing that's not on here that I also want to mention is that all of our faculty are also practitioners. So while they're teaching, many of them have their own consulting agencies. They're working, they're doing research with um, you know, people in the government. They have lots of connections and they're using those connections to you know, build our students' network and get our students into their network. Our degrees are also heavily customizable. So even though a student could be folk or getting a master's degree in international education management, let's say, they could add a TESOL certificate or a TESOL or a TEFL certificate. Um, or if a student is in our MPA program and they want to really 
hone their skills on program management, they can do an MPA certificate. So there's a lot of opportunities to kind of dip your toes in a couple different topics, um, depending on your interests. And so um, we offer customizable um, advising. Oh, this is a slide. <laughs> we offer customizable, customizable advising um, from the moment a student is, expresses interest um, up until they graduate and beyond to kind of help students identify what all of their niche interests are and, and how we can help them achieve that at the Institute. Um, and then finally, one of the things that really sets us apart is our emphasis on intercultural competence and language study. So with half of our degrees, that second and third language is required. For some of our degrees, the language is optional. Um, and if students choose not to do a second or third language, we'll ask that they do intercultural competence courses. For some of those programs, like the international policy, um, trade, the MPA, um, or environmental policy where language is optional. Um, it will, sorry, if a student wants to add a language, we do ask that they're at that 200 level. Again, our language courses are content-based, so they're very high level. Um, you have to come with some level of proficiency at the time of admission. Um, and like I mentioned, we have amazing academic and career advisors. Each program has a dedicated career and academic advisor. And we've been really intentional with having that be one person. So they have a really holistic understanding of our students. They understand what your career goals and can advise you on the right courses, the right certificates, the right co-curricular and extracurricular activities to be a part of to help our students get there. And so the most important topic, how are you gonna pay for a master's degree? Um, so first, I just want to mention that as an alumni of the, a uni the University of California's global programs, you're eligible for a guaranteed 25% scholarship just right off the bat. Um, and so if, as long as you've done any type of program um, with, with the global office here, whether that's an internship, whether it's actually going abroad, um, really anything, you'll get a guaranteed 25% scholarship. Our guaranteed scholarships are stackable up to between up to 30 and 40%, depending on how early you apply and depending on your mayor. But let's say you do a study abroad program um, here at UC Santa Cruz and you apply for a Gilman Award or a Boren Scholarship. You can stack those and get up to 30 to 40%. Um, if you do like a Fulbright, those actually fund 100% of your tuition. Um, so you can actually end up getting even more than that 40%. Um, so some of these organizations and institutions here, these are available to you as an undergrad student doing study abroad. In the event that you, you know, maybe have been living the last couple of years through COVID and you weren't able to go abroad, we also have partnered with organizations um, and institutions that give international opportunities and domestic opportunities after college. So Peace Corps is a great way to get a really great scholarship and to get um, experience in the field. We actually give 45, up to a 45% scholarship to um, returned Peace Corps fellows. Uh, we also have partnered with JET and TAPIF and EPIC. Those are the and auxiliares. Those are the English teaching programs um, in Spain and France and Korea and Japan. Um, and then AmeriCorps and City Year, those are great volunteer options um, that are actually based in the US. And those services can be anywhere from like six months to two years. Um, but again, just by being an alumni of those programs, you get a guaranteed scholarship with us. Some other ways to fund the degree are need-based grants. Um, and these are grants that we award to students with previous um, undergrad debt. Um, and those usually go around up to, up to $4,000. We also have federal work study, which allows students to work 20 hours a week on campus. Um, we have federal loans, fellowships, and we have a great external scholarship resource database on our website. Um, and so now I will just quickly talk about our admissions process. So we have a really holistic approach. Um, there's an online application, we'll ask for official transcripts, a couple letters of recommendation. 
your resume, and then a career objectives essay. So between the, your, the res your resume and the objectives essay, we really want you to highlight your international exposure, professional experiences, academic background, and then your career goals. You know, why are you a good fit for our institution? Why are we a good fit for you? And really, what would you want to do with your degree? It, it sounds corny, but how will you change the world? Or and I suggest just getting help with those essay questions. You can go to your writing center or something. Um, and I just want to mention that our the GRE and the GMAT are optional. If you have high scores, I definitely recommend you submit them because they can increase your scholarship awards. And then um, again, just being a partner um, of any of an alumni, um, the, the $65 application fee is waived. So um, yes, a couple next steps. Go to the career center at your campus. Um, even if you don't think the Middlebury Institute's the right choice for you, definitely talk to your career center to see what other grad opportunities there are. Um, if you are going to start writing any of our scholarship essays or career objectives essays, get help at your writing center. Um, if you, I passed out some contact cards. So if you fill that out and indicate which program you're interested in, I'll connect you with an enrollment advisor. Um, and you can talk a little bit more one on one to get specific information about the program you're interested in, the application process, which guaranteed scholarships you may be eligible for other funding opportunities, et cetera. Um, so I think we can end the recording and then 